A very big reason people are living here today is for the sole purpose of healing others in need. We don't walk at it alone. It's a magnificent blend of individualistic people with extraordinary abilities, all joining in to heal the world together. And since all of us have the ability to heal, there must be a way to tell the world all about it. Welcome to the Healers Podcast. Glyphosate, the chemical name that's in Monsanto's Roundup, has been used in our world for over 44 years. The controversy surrounding this pesticide is a hot topic. Is it harmful or is it safe? And just how much of this pesticide has contaminated our food and water supply? The healer sat down with world-renowned clinical nutritionist to the stars of Hollywood, Drew Prince, to get some answers on the pesticide glyphosate. Uh-huh. Hey. That's the Hollywood crowd. You Instant can't see them. Audience. Instant Virtual audience. Virtual audience. Yeah. All right, everybody calm down. Everybody calm down. <laughs> so everybody, welcome to the Healers. My name is Logan. I'm Gabrielle. And we have our special guest, Mr. Drew Prince. Prince. Hi. With a Z on the end, which is amazing. because It's right. better than with an S on the end, because the yeah. Z is all about electricity, <laughs> so that's awesome. <laughs> So I have known you for, gosh, I think about at least 10 years now. Somewhere between 10 and maybe 13 years. Yes. So so. Drew is the amazing nutritionist to Mm -hmm. many, uh, many stars, celebrities, athletes, uh, diplomats. Uh, You have quite a array of uh, very interesting and powerful clients. And I personally think you are one of the most impressive nutritionists uh, because of your knowledge and constant learning and understanding and use of, you know, all of the tools that are progressing, such as the DNA test, which we'll get into but I also really love you because of your love and compassion and dedication to teaching your clients and to helping your clients feel better and optimize their health. And I just love and appreciate you so much for that. So I'm so happy to have you here today. And we're going to talk about a couple of subjects today. So why don't we start with one of the <clears throat> subjects that makes me very upset, <laughs> glyphosate, yeah. which I just came back with a very elevated level. And well, hold on, before you go any further, we're talking about glyphosate, but that, I just said that, right? I know that. Yeah. <clears throat> what is glyphosate? Okay. Well, some people gonna, may not know. <laughs> well, yeah. You know, here, I'll, I'll let you, let, you, let, me, let me kind of give you some very interesting history about this. Yes. So, um, the name. Is synonymous with a statement called Roundup. That's the name of the, the herbicide Roundup, right. that's used throughout the United States. It's yeah. the most widely used. Um, originally, when this was invented as a chemical, it was used to clean out boilers that it had, you know, boiling water in them, trains, those types of things. So it was really a, a commercial product to clean metals and to get rid of burnt surfaces. And when they noticed, when they poured out the inside of the boilers, when they were cleaning them, anywhere they poured it, nothing would grow. So all the weeds and foliage died. Hmm. So eventually, uh, you know, through the wonderful world of biochemical engineering, someone said, well, this would really make a really good weed killer. <laughs> so they, they started working with it. But amazingly, what happens is it's so powerful and it kills almost any type of weed immediately. But the poor thing is it also kills the crops that people were trying to raise to actually for the food supply. Mm-hmm. So the bad thing is, is then with our new genetic engineering, uh, they created a line of seeds and plants for, that are genetically modified that can withstand 
the Roundup at a very high dose. Yep. So by putting these things together, basically you can you can grow corn. You can make sure you kill all the weeds around the corn. You get a great a great harvest, a great great amount of this, and basically they're not being damaged by the weeds. Mm. But to do this, they've had to GMO. They've genetically modified the corn or the wheat, and by doing that, they've changed it dramatically. They yeah. can argue all they want that they haven't, but it is it's it's engineered to withstand an herbicide that can kill almost anything. Mm. So. That's the premise of how it became a chemical that's so widely used now. The real issue is it, it's, if it can kill weeds and if it gets rid of metals, you kind of understand that when we get exposed to it or animal life gets exposed to it, it has far big consequences. And so the strange thing is some people say, well, we think that they were putting this on to kill insects. Well, it does kill insects, but that's not the purpose. Right. The purpose was to, to get rid of the weeds. Then the second purpose is... It's to kill our insides. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's where you come in. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what we're here to talk about today. And, I mean, and, and, and what's happening is Gabrielle has been um, very nice to me that she allows me to run these very exotic tests on her to, to, to be able to, to help her with her I'm healing just other alive people. Guinea pig. And, then, she's a, and so <laughs> one of the tests was specifically on this chemical. And... Why our discussion of these results is so important is in all the years I've known Gabrielle, she is a perfectionist about choosing what foods to eat, the quality, uh, you know, where the sources are, who grew it, mm -hmm. um, you know. So she's a person that can pick apart Whole Foods or Air One. She knows when things are good and when they're not. Um, those little people on the side of the freeways that are out in Ventura County where they're selling the strawberries, she'll, she'll kind of be able to figure out if they're real or they're fake. The people say they're, they're organic. So when we did this test, and I've seen over the years how she selects her food and rejects this, I would have said right away, she's going to be one of the few people yeah. that we test that really has no nothing. Decision, yeah. nothing. But unfortunately... We found a tremendously high level, and you know how's they kind of rate it where it's elevated. Well, it was it was dramatically elevated. Now, what's dramatically elevated? Like, well, well it just give, means give the, the parts, the parts, the parts per million that they found in her in her specimen was so high that they, from a demographics, so they've gone out and they've measured people in society, and and they took a look at Gabrielle and said, you know, we're looking at the demographics of a female, young a young female. And that, that her amount was higher than we would have expected, so much so that we consider it elevated. Yeah. Um, they're also looking at maybe that's just a temporary state. Yeah. But, but knowing how she eats, that means that must have been a gradual buildup. Right. And she's been exposed to it for a long time. And so that's when um, most of the people that are, that are in our audience yeah. will understand that there's been a big conflict now and Monsanto is just being abused and fought, which I'm, I'm happy with, with, law, with lawsuits. <laughs> me too, and I'm happy I'm spiritual because <laughs> it's made me very angry. <laughs> yes, because it's made me, and it's don't. made me really wonder where where is this where is this really coming from? And again, is the food that is you know that I'm buying that is quote unquote organic? Is it really? I'm not sure. So it's made me it's made me really question a lot of things uh, and have a lot of love and compassion for all of us because I know that if this is happening to me, then it's happening to a lot of people. The, the residuals of um, once this has been introduced to the to the atmosphere, to the environment, to the water supply, into the animal life, it no matter if we think we're making the right choice, most of the things are being exposed. Are, are areas that such as they've determined that rain actually contains a residual of this compound, mm. particularly higher levels in the United States than in Europe and other places. So since we put it into the environment, it's in the water supply, animal life that we know eats it, let's say it's grain that's being fed to cattle mm -hmm. or to pigs or to lambs, mm -hmm. um, that people down the line eat it. So people really don't reflect upon the fact that the fat content, the good chemicals, things that are in our, our food supply, mm. 
we've we've influenced it all along the way. Right. So, in your case, I know that you're not a person that is that is eating meat and those things. Mm-hmm. So you're not getting it from that, which then unfortunately puts us into the place. Is it is it the water that you're you're getting out of your tap that you might be washing your vegetables with? Or is it that we're at Air One or Whole Foods where they've gotten an organic thing that they probably rinsed it, they, right. you know, and maybe it was filtered, but they rinsed it. Um, but years ago, we remember when Whole Foods, you and I had even chatted about this, where Whole Foods had had an expose that some people had come in and they bought a whole bunch of organic stuff and tested it. And not only it had Roundup on it, it actually had other pesticides. And then Whole Foods came to the table and said, oh, you know, in our storage if a, if a bushel of organic apples is put on a box of bananas from South America, there's a residual oh, gas mm. from that, the herbicide. They actually say that? Mm. Yeah, oh, yeah, yes. Mm. And, and so they have a new thing now that by, in another three or four years, they're finally going to make everybody be compliant. And, and so for years, they were saying this stuff was perfect. It's organic and blah, blah, blah. But now they've admitted that people have to catch up with that. Mm. So we're not getting rid of all our suppliers right now because we wouldn't have any suppliers. But we're going to we're going to test. We're going to make you comply. Not now. You have a time in the future. Wow. So. You were going to talk about some statistics yes. about uh, the amount of. So so, a pro- so if we go back to 1974, the, the amount of this product that was used in the U.S. for using as an herbicide was about 600 tons. So you know that's that's, <laughs> that's, that's pretty. That's a, that seems like a big number. But in, in 19, excuse me, in 2014, so still a little dated, we're about still the statistic, we're now up to 128,000 tons being used in the wow. United States. That's a lot of contamination. Uh, and, and compared to, uh, you know, when we think about Europe and Asia and those things, our, our EPA requirements and the ratings and the, the amount that's allowed, we're about two to four times in all areas at higher limits, but realize no one's policing this. So people, in a sense, don't, you know, don't say, hey, you know, did you test my stuff? No. So all food supply that goes into our stores, it doesn't have to go through mandatory testing. Only when something goes wrong where people get sick or there's a complaint made or something that's obviously wrong, that's when it gets tested. So our government, the FDA and those things, they don't go around randomly testing things. So it's really kind of up to competitors, or we thought that Whole Foods, in their own in their own way of being, you know, good customer service, yeah. would be doing this. But unfortunately, they yeah. don't. Nope. Let's let's talk about and list some of the the forms of uh, health issues that this can cause. So the the thing that pretty much the the big circle for people to kind of understand is. The food that's exposed to this, which can be obviously meat supply, can be vegetables, can be fruit, and unfortunately, water. Water. Water and beverages and probably fruit juices, you know, all these types of things that you think Pretty about. much anything you can put inside your mouth exactly. is going to be contaminated with glyphosate. And what, what's happening is <laughs> that, that that part was, was, was kind of a funny pun you were talking about. But the, so the, the main thing is, is when we look at this, it exposes our tissue to it, but it's a cell disruptor. Yeah. So our gut biome, which is 10 trillion different bacteria and funguses and, and parasites, things that are kind of bad, but they're all in there, they've been exposed to it. So literally for 10 to 20 years of a typical person living in the United States, even if they're perfectly good about this, they've been messing up their gut biome. And to really understand our gut biome is kind of our second brain yeah it's giving us uh, chemicals it's helping us digest our food it's giving us b vitamins so by it being corrupted it's doing the wrong thing it's more inflammatory it's not getting rid of toxins as well remember the liver pancreas and gallbladder all go into our digestive yeah. tract and their ducts are basically a, a, so everything's a, just like, leaching everything's just leaching out so we're hurting everything and yeah. stuff and so They've already concluded that this is causing great issues. And now with litigation, they're mm. trying to demonstrate that this is causing cancers. Yeah. In, in, in they are demonstrating by awarding one man $250 million. Yes. And, and there's many more. There was a class action for over $2 yeah. billion that was that was. And won. you got $250 for it. Yeah. So, 
So I yeah. think that's just the beginning of it. And so, of course, now, I think, Gabrielle, you mentioned this a little earlier, that you want to see the commercials. They're, Justice. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there is a commercial that says, basically, if you have non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, if you've been diagnosed with that, you should pause immediately and see, have you been involved with agriculture, landscaping, you know, construction, wow. those types of things. And maybe almost say someone that just eats really good, you know, eats a lot of fruits and vegetables, you basically should be looking into the chance if you, you have litigation. So let, me get, so, let me, so, so let me give the audience something to, to, to kind of ponder here. So here you have somebody in Gabrielle who is probably one of the cleanest eaters that I know of. And she has an extremely high level of glyphosate in her body. So, I mean, does that put a really a huge dilemma on today's society? Because most society doesn't eat as clean as she does. So, I mean, that's kind of a scary thought when you think about it. I well, mean, the we people that are eating the packaged food, <laughs> maybe. Even if you're not, I mean, you're eating super, super clean. Yeah, and I you don't have high eat levels, the packaged so, food. But you know, and you take care of yourself. Because I'm not eating that packaged food, I'm eating the, the vegetables. And so, I'm in the fruits a lot. Yeah. To so so that leaves so Drew. How many people are testing right now that are coming to your office? No, you guys do an enormous so, amount of so testing. We do a tremendous amount of testing, but this is basically because of this experience with Gabrielle. It has opened my eyes up sure. to something because you know if a person comes in and and obviously they have health issues, they're overweight, they're pre diabetic. Um, I'm not zeroing in on this one specific thing, but because the the results were astounding. Mm -hmm then it's made me kind of kind of almost have a secondary thought. And what also is kind of important to realize is they're now rating the amount of, of, of this actual chemical in certain food groups, particularly in the vegetarian protein world. And so this, you know, here's, here's one thing I'm going to say that probably will we'll have some people kind of come after us a little bit, but the Impossible Burger. I love it. Come after it, us. It, so the, so the, impos the Impossible Burger, you've yeah. heard about that, Oh, of yes. Okay. So, so an independent group went out and purchased the Impossible Burger and tested it. Mm -hmm. And it came, the level comes out to be 11 times greater than should be allowed in a food product. You hear that, everybody? Impossible mm -hmm. Burger, man. 11, 11 times, times yeah. higher so, than it's so, supposed to be. And wow. So, you know, the, it, the response, of course, is that was just one yeah. crop I mean, that it, was processed. I mean, it tastes great, but I've noticed, I, I, I was wondering, I was like, these things are amazing. And afterwards, my stomach just blows up and then I have gas and I'm like, what is going on? And I, I, it was after probably about my third or fourth time having one, I was like, no, this is something that's not right with this, but it tastes so good. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's a disruptor of the gut biome. Mm -hmm. And and so we can, we can say what down the line, what does that do? And more and more of the world, particularly if we kind of think about here we are in Southern California, then we have, you know, California, and even the U.S. is trying to be as, as growth in the health industry. So mm -hmm. obviously, mm -hmm. we have places here in Southern California that are very nicely done for vegetarians where they can make Absolutely. choices and people that want gluten free. Yeah. And so the sad piece is to now be critical of, right of, of the, those the, choices of those now. choices yes and i have to say i i just learned an interesting statistic that uh vegan demand for vegan food was up 980 percent which is amazing and thank you for that i'm so happy to hear and see that and in so much so that kfc is now working with beyond meat so so it, 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 like you said, it, it's kind of, it's bittersweet, right? Because we, there is a demand. We are looking for these alternatives, but let's, let's get it right. <laughs> let's, and, let's, and let's what, what they found is when they tested the impossible burger, they found high levels when they tested some of the, 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 um, I guess we'd say the, the faux meat from beyond mm -hmm. that they didn't have high levels. Well, there so you the go. source material Interesting. that right. they're using for their mm -hmm. formulas when they tend to be GMO, yeah. which means they're engineered to last against uh -huh. the Roundup. They have lower levels. Right. They have, so, uh -oh. so, so the engineered ones have higher levels. Mm. So, so when it's GMO, when you see that like soy GMO, that's the problem. Then the other important thing for people to realize is we talk a lot about what the actual source material is, but 
there's a big company called Cargill. And Cargill, they, their hands are in everything agricultural. They own all the um, trucking companies. They buy it on the futures market. They sell it overseas to, to China mm-hmm. and all the companies. They own the big grain elevators in all the little cities and stuff. Mm-hmm. So they're, they're really part of the transportation and purchasing and storage. So they own Park Place and Boardwalk. Boardwalk exactly. Okay. So <laughs> they have, they have um, I brought their talking points mm-hmm. about this. In other words, this is their strategy in dealing with the public mm-hmm. about this. But what people need to know is, is this is used on wheat, harvesting this is used on canola which is a canola oil yeah. is very popular people think yes. it actually huge yeah, it's yeah. on all your Frying potato oils. chips yeah, and yeah. a lot yeah. of them yeah i'm not a big fan of canola oil good excellent it's from canada though yeah <laughs> anyway go ahead but, it, but it's engineered right so it's exactly, engineered. exactly so it's soy and corn which yeah. we kind of well, probably already understand yep um, sugar cane, and that's a you know you know that's a it's kind of an interesting concept. Yeah. That, um, oats, and that's that's an area that we all talk uh-huh. about because that's kind of a healthy alternative Oatmeal. for people that are not going yeah. the wheat route. And then, um, so it, it's important to understand that they use they use this they spray the glyphosates they spray it on crops right before they harvest it. And I used to always think well. Oh, they're, they're doing that so that when they put it in storage, that insects don't eat it. So it that was that was kind of my. Wait a minute, they're spraying it when it's ready to be harvested. Like yes, they're, they're chopping yes, it and then they're spraying yes. it. No, no. I mean, they well, they spray it before they, they, they chop then it. They chop it down. So I was I was really curious about this because I was thinking, does this why what am I trying to prevent weeds from when I'm going to cut it down right? So what I det- so here was the most interesting concept, is we said that it actually, well, let's say it's GMO. If it's GMO wheat, when they spray it, it's not going to hurt the wheat. But they're using it for non-GMO products because when you spray it, it dies and you can harvest it. So when when wheat is finishing off, the big the big fields don't dry at the same rate. Mm. But if they spray it, they know within three days wow. we can we can cut this all so down. So it's a control method. It's wow. a control method, but it's being introduced to things that are non-GMO, which we would think of as safe. As safe, yeah. Yeah. So that's it's safe. it's a very that's, this is this is a big deal right here. Just, I didn't know that, and that's like now I'm gonna have to investigate. So it's it. outrageous. That's re- that's crazy. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Drew. So the pre-harvesting is it's just just it's a very interesting concept because they say it desiccates. It helps dry the crop faster and more uniform yeah. so so they actually claim that certain times of the year if the weather's perfect they don't have to use it so that's part of their defense they're saying we don't use this all the time yeah, in certain right. areas but uh, <laughs> but it's just wow. it's, it's a very um it's so prevalent and it's in our water supply and obviously my father was a rancher so he was very much into raising cattle and basically the big thing in the in the cattle industry that changed was when they became pen fed and when they were put into a smaller space and they were fed grains like corn and soybeans. Mm. So uh, and, uh, that that it was not grass fed. So now, interestingly enough, when people want something healthier, mm-hmm. they're looking for bison and they're looking for for beef that's grass fed. Right. OK. And so it's it's the concept was we went from in the 1950s when everything was grass fed, the 60s, it was grain fed. And now more and more grain fed, smaller area, smaller area, more antibiotics, more growth hormone. And now we have a little bit of a catastrophe because that's in our food supply. So so with Gabrielle, I'd be talking to her about fruits and vegetables, you know, where, where you could be getting it from. Where most of the people out there don't understand, they're getting it from every, they're getting it from their eggs, they're getting it from their chicken, they're getting it from their, their, their beef that they're everything eating. Is that contaminated. Everything is contaminated. But do you think that because, I mean, the juicing industry is, is so huge now, I mean, there's, it's, it's in, I mean, look in the grocery stores, there's this big spike in drinking all this juice now, and obviously that's a concentrated um, aspect of, of, of glyphosate, really, because of the mm-hmm. juicing aspect. So, I mean, that, plays, that probably plays a big role in all this. I, the juicing because she drinks a lot of juice. That's, that's an excellent thing that you've brought up, and and mm-hmm. I think that it's it's an absolute because it concentrates anything that that produce was exposed to. Mm-hmm. So how it was cleaned, you know, some places obviously use 
we use a chlorine type mix. Some people yeah. places say we don't. So, so it's a it's a concept. Am I killing the bacteria or am I just concentrating juice? So this big thing with celery. So you heard about all the people who are doing the celery. Yeah. Uh, yes, I would okay. be one of those people. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm not. Medium. So, well, I think it's a crock. But anyway. Well, no. But what's very important for people to realize is that as as vegetables and fruit mature, they go through stages, and so. Yeah. So when you look at celery, um, and you look at when it's been cut at the bottom, the big base, so when there's discoloration there in brown, we think browning, let's say, um, it can be a sign that it's going through a chemical change that's actually making a chemical inside the celery that happens to be poisonous. Mm. So if you take four or four big, huge things of it and you make juice, because when they're making the juice, if you don't make it yourself, you don't know for sure that you're getting the best, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. freshest, right? If you mm -hmm. make it yourself, that's fine. But when you're going to an outside juice place, they just grind it up because they got to use it. They got to mm -hmm. use it, yeah. So mm -hmm. that's a bad thing because there's some toxins in that stuff. Mm. God, see, guys, that's why I'm saying we need to have a lab testing company. That's, that's on <laughs> yeah, the list. Yeah, I know it's on my list. It's on the list. It's man, on my I'm list. Because you, then you, can, you then really you have... don't know what nope. it is you're buying. Nope. You really don't know, and it's 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 so frustrating. I I find it so frustrating. And again, I just have to go back to my spiritual practice. <laughs> <laughs> because it it does it it makes me feel a little angry um and frustrated that i can't i can't rely on my food sources i can't rely on what they say and you really don't know you have no we have no idea what we're getting we don't we we don't know what we're getting when we purchase the food we have we've placed a trust in in more of this world that's supposed to be health conscious and sometimes we're disappointed because um, I believe in this principle of gradualism. So if you do something that's not good for you, but you do it gradually, you don't realize yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And that's what that's the justification that companies have with our government and our government when they're trying to regulate is if you know you come in with a test, you go, hey, we just made this new product. We tested it. It didn't kill anything. So the, doc, the, the government says you can do it. The reality is, is no one sits there and says what happens if you do it for ten years, and what yeah. happens if you feed it to animals, right? And all this—the long-term, long-term effects of it. Would, would you say that? What do you, What do you think are the most contaminated uh, uh, elements out there? I mean, would you say fruits and vegetables are probably the carrying the highest amounts of glyphosate? Well, I, I think that the the ones that were engineered. So, so technically, as we talk about the soy, which is GMO, mm -hmm. and we talk about the corn supply, which is GMO, yeah. Um, in the wheat, there's an argument about wheat that not as much of it in the U.S. is GMO. I, I happen to think it is, but because of the, the problem with the glutens. But um, the, the main thing is for years, like, like Gabrielle, we'd be chatting about thyroid health. And what's amazing is there's, there's a, you know, great, a great adage in, in the world of medicine and nutrition. Yeah. You know, don't eat too much soy if you're a woman because it's going to have some, some conflicts with your, with your thyroid hormone production. <laughs> And so what's nice. fabulous is someone estrogen. Yeah, someone argued with me and and I learned my lesson was, hey, they don't really have a soy thyroid issue in Japan. Hmm, they eat so, a lot of soy over so there. They, they, they eat a lot of soy. Mm -hmm. So what's very interesting is they just happen not to eat GMO US soy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's the GMO. Exactly. Which is what's what's the percentage now? It's like ninety two percent is is all GMO soy now or something like that? In well, what's hard is because of labeling laws, which there's still a fight with some of the states, it's hard for us to even determine, you know, what is GMO and where it's been in the thing. So only our only countries that are trying to take our exports, what's amazing is Russia has refused to purchase corn. And this is feed corn. This is not corn for humans. Animals and animal animals. feed. They've refused it because it's GMO. Now, they obviously need extra corn and things, but when Russia, kind of in a sense, and they're not, obviously they're paying the market value, they're not paying an exorbitant price. When they say that we've decided not to because we don't believe it's healthy, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, mm -hmm. that's saying a big deal. That's a big deal. Um, that's a big deal. So I want to change subjects a little bit. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I love about you is you do do all these various types of testings where if you go to a Western medicine doctor, he's maybe not going to test your glyphosate level. But one of the other types of testing uh, that I love that you do is the DNA, the genetic uh, decoding to figure out your disposition. And I'd love for you to explain the audience how 
you know, how they can utilize that, how that works, and really how important that is for understanding your genetic makeup and, you know, moving forward in life to really have a great quality of life. Well, anybody that's out there that, let's say, is um, 15, 16, 18, 20, this statement about your DNA is really, really crucial. It's going to change your entire life. It's going to change how you you heal yourself. It's going to change how you make yourself uh, the best athlete if you want to be the best athlete. Um, person of my of my age, um, you know, I, I get satisfaction from looking about my DNA, but some of the stuff I've been I've, I've been exposed to, I haven't been able to make a correction to. Uh, Gabrielle is, is of the right age that there's still a lot of great benefits that can be done with looking at this. So when That's we because I'm 16 <laughs> <laughs> with high gloss face goals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but D, our DNA are really <clears throat> are switches that make proteins that help us do chemical things in our body and how we approach things. So with the advent of this home DNA kits or consumer DNA kits, and there's companies like 23andMe, Ancestry, I like those two the best because they're, very, they're relatively thorough. 23andMe has a few SNPs that they've, they've purchased the right to look at, uh, which is even more so than the others. Now what's a SNP? A SNP is a polymorphism that is, that is a change on a, on a gene. So on a gene, you have lots of little SNPs. Some of the SNPs are deviations, so they're not typical. So they're not the, the when you look at it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an aberration. So would you say, I mean, like, it would be like a tumor then, like a growth no, or no, something? No, right. So I'm trying to get an analogy. So like in the lane. each gene does something specific. Okay. And, and these consumer gene tests, they look at like 16,000 genes. But on top of that, they're looking at over a half million SNPs of the individual. And so beyond consumer, we have testing that's even more detailed that can be done. But with the consumers, people have done these in their house and they found out where their family's from on both sides, their mother and father. And it's, it's interesting to see the heritage. And so, but what they don't realize is when they bought one of these kits mm -hmm. and sent it in and they get this thing where you're from in the world and who you're related to and stuff, what you don't realize is you also have the right to download your raw data. It's a 20 megabyte file. For free. For free. And you, you own it. It's you. It's you. And so I take that information if the client privileges me to, and I process it. And that information tells us lots of unusual things that are, are really good about ourselves, and unfortunately some things that were inefficient. And so what we're looking at is we're looking at inefficiencies where we get, we, we're not getting the result we expect. And the best way of kind of saying that is, is like, for instance, um, I'm nearsighted. So in, in fifth grade, I remember the day, one day I just went into class and the teacher asked me to read something on the board and I couldn't read it. And, and I was very embarrassed and, mm. and the class, you know, everybody kind of, what's going on? And my eyesight changed in one day. So I thought, well, this wow. is really bizarre. <clears throat> so for all these years, if you come to me as a client for nutrition and you say, you know, I've heard about, you know, vitamin A, it's fat soluble, you might get an overdose, you know, what, what type should I take, Drew? The natural thing would be beta carotene, which is called right. pro-vitamin A. You get it from carrots and yams. Well, the interesting thing is there's a specific gene that's been researched. And when I look at mine in the, these little SNP settings, the, what I inherited from both my parents, I'm 80% inefficient in using beta carotene for my, my, my need of vitamin A. We need vitamin A yeah. for our mm -hmm. immune system. Mm -hmm. And so the minute I realized that, I thought, well, I need to go get retinal A or what we call retinal palmitate. And that's usually from like the old adage of cod liver oil. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I took it immediately, my immune system improved, my gut function improved. I noticed it right away. Wow. So, wow. so these little secrets the body can tell us sometimes can be really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and it can help people, uh, you know, so we're talking about Gabrielle and, and she already found that she has this huge buildup of, of let's say a toxin. Well, from looking at her DNA, we can see if she's a slow metabolizer, a medium metabolizer, or a high metabolizer. And that tells me um, if she was facing an operation and she was going to get some anesthesia, I would say, oh, Gabrielle, you got to be a little more careful because your body doesn't get rid of bad things quickly. Mm -hmm. Wow, amazing. So you have to kind of support the system. Right. So there's so much information. that it, it, 
it's you know it's um, in every every week or every every month there's more articles like right. you know this tells us this and they're just using they're using statistical analysis to determine what the commonality is for people that have Parkinson's or ALS um, and it's not meant to scare people yeah I know I know that sometimes when I chat with clients I go you know we're not going to chat about anything that's scary yeah and then sometimes I'll go but well, you know I'd really like to know my my father had this I'd like to know if it's part of my so the good news is even in some of these most powerful gene settings that can actually cause some issues they've actually found out that lifestyle adjustments the sooner they're done make a difference so right. that's why I said the 15 right. 16 18 year old this stuff is life-changing. So you would recommend, like, if you're the younger, the better, obviously, getting these testings done would be really beneficial for anybody. But as still, long I as think the it's... Parents are... Well, yeah, yeah of course, they're yeah, more they're, yeah. they're okay with that. Still, I think it's it's still, I, I feel like, so beneficial at any age just because when you're having health issues, maybe you can try to figure out, well, why is this happening? Why, you know, why am I disposition to this? Why am I, you know, Parkinson's a big... Um, you know, a, a big part of Parkinson's is, is heavy metals, right? And so if you're a person who doesn't naturally chelate naturally, then you would, you know, look at that and go, oh, okay, you know, I probably have a, a high buildup of heavy metals. So I, mm -hmm. I feel like it's valuable at any age. It's Maybe it's not as valuable, you know, because you're not 16 years old, but it's still really important information and in figuring out what's going on with your body and how your body works. And it's what's so nice about it is, um, just as you kind of mentioned, a lot of people question themselves mm -hmm. and, and they question about what they've done in their life and why me or, you know, is this, um, you know, is it is it my eating habits? Is it my fitness? Why is this happening to me? And what's really unique about this is it's laid out in a way that says, look, you're 80% inefficient at this thing. So if you've measured your vitamin A levels and it's perfect, then maybe you don't need to do anything. Mm. But sometimes people will say, so, you know, we'll, we'll chat about that people have a, this thing with lectins. You know, lectins mm -hmm. are really, yeah. really can be damaging. Gundry. Gund right. <laughs> so, so what mm. happens is, is um, there, there's a genetic profile that shows that lectins can bother the system. Mm. So, but oh, guess, really? guess what? Twenty percent of the world has that, and eighty percent doesn't. Mm, so, so in reality, it, you mm. know, if the person has that has the twenty percent predisposition to have an issue, if they go off lectins, they're going to notice a big change big in their change. health. Yeah. It's fabulous. So, I think that when we talk about the blood type diet, you know, people try to look at that yeah. concept, right. and they'd always come into me and go, "Oh, you know, I'm I'm O positive. You know, mm. should I eat this?" <laughs> so, it's really important to realize that. That's now that we can look at the genes, we can be much more pinpoint of foods and lifestyle. And you're really things. peeling back the onion, is they what can you're make, doing. They can make a difference. You're really peeling back the onion with those yeah. testings. That's that's awesome. Sure. We got we got a couple more minutes to go, man. I, I mean, I, we could sit here and talk about this for a couple hours because. I mean, how many people have gotten these tests and, and haven't then, really downloaded their raw data? Yeah, it's so amazing. And, and, um, and yeah. just to touch on, like, I mean, you do you do a lot of GI gut testing. You do telomeres. You do, uh, there's another test that I love. Neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitter. Nutri-valve, which yeah. is looking at, you yeah. know, your probiotics, your omegas. So I love that you're doing such advanced testing so people can really take a look at what's really going on inside. Yeah their bodies i mean it's like you kind of start where you know traditional medicine doctors you know stop with very basic traditional blood work so i really i love that and appreciate <laughs> so much about you and and as i said earlier i mean you're constantly sending me information and and learning new things and it's so important well gabrielle is the 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 type of client that, that I can say, hey, your test discovered this. And she's like thrilled <laughs> instead, of it, instead of it being negative. Because I, I, because I want to be the best version of myself and I want to I wanna understand what's going on mm. and, and with the way in which our food sources are mm. changing uh, so rapidly, it's so important. And I'm, I'm also looking and thinking to myself, you know, what's it going to be like in 20 years? And yeah. I, I'm, I'm so ready for my greenhouse. I'm ready. That's my, That's my only goal. Really. Number one is go I, food. I can't wait to yeah. grow my own That's food. So I know what I'm eating yeah. because 
Because otherwise, we really don't know is is really the. Well, now we do. Line. I mean, come on, you got high levels of glyphosate, so yes, no. it's, it's, a, it's, a, yeah. it's a freaking obvious. I'm, I'm eating a bunch of crap. I don't even need to do my testing then, because I I eat a lot of vegetables and drink a lot of juice like you. So if you got high glyphosate, you, then I, I can. And everything you, you buy is n- not organic, which is that's because <laughs> I think I, not, I think well, you know how I feel about that whole thing. But I mean, come on, you buy all organic. You, I know. All you do is buy organic. You go buy organic, and you still I have know. high levels of glyphosate. And, and there's so. a good there's a as you brought up about the GI testing, there's probably <clears throat> a, um, a good amount of thought that once you've disrupted the gut biome, they're trying to help you detox. They're trying to help you get rid of bad things. Once you put them awry, they're not there to help protect you. Yeah. So that area is the one piece that 24 hours a day. Is either helping you or you're just feeding it and it's taking. And, and I think that influences mood, energy, our neurotransmitters. It's, it's you know, we're the host. Mm-hmm. And those guys in there are really kind of from the Star, yeah. Star Trek world. They're a little bit different. Yeah, and an, another thing to point out too, because I know so many people uh, suffer from depression. And I think it's really important that you you see somebody like a nutritionist who's going to do a lot of your brain chemical testing as opposed to just going uh, and getting a prescription for a drug. Uh, I'm a, I'm a big uh, advocate of, of looking at those neurotransmitters first and understanding what's really going on uh, upstairs. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, And I love that you do that for your clients. It's so important. And um, you have so many amazing, Mm -hmm. Uh, she, she's missed test. <laughs> uh oh, he's gonna be calling you tomorrow. Like, hey, Gabs, I got this test you can do. <laughs> yeah, in fact, I haven't done the telomeres test, which yeah. uh, I'm like, hmm, yes, yeah, so let's look at those telomeres. So, Drew, Drew, before we go, let me ask you: What's the, if you if someone could just take one supplement, which one would it be? What would you recommend? You can only just take one. You can only just take one supplement. Gosh. What would it be? Well, no, so. The trick is, is when you're interfacing with your doctor, I, I hope people see their doctors regularly and I hope they get some basic blood work. Yeah. And I want people to look at their blood work. Yeah, and then because, please continue on your yeah, journey. Yes. But vitamin D testing <laughs> vitamin D. Is, is the one thing that's so important because we put on sunscreen, we protect ourselves from... Chemtrails, so blocking yeah. the sun. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we don't get enough natural production of yeah. vitamin D. And... It affects genes. And so the genes send signals to each other to do what they're supposed to do. Vitamin D is one of the big factors that help genes do the right thing. So years and years of having low vitamin D, we're inside, we're with computers, yeah. we're, you know, artificial light. Artificial light. Terrible, yeah. terrible, terrible. So I'd say to everybody, when you see your doctor next time, you say, gosh, you know, I really think I need to test my vitamin D. Ten years ago, the doctors would just look at you and say, Eh, insurance won't pay for that. They're getting a lot more lenient with that. Mm-hmm. So vitamin D is a great thing to look at every year. Mm-hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. Great words of wisdom right there. That's for sure. So vitamin D, everybody, get some sun, especially even in California. You have no freaking excuse, man. For sure. No excuse at all. And anybody who's listening, I am the biggest fan of this man over here. As I said before, if, if you want a practitioner who just really loves and cares and gives his all and attention to you, that would definitely, definitely be, be you, Drew. Yep. Drew no Prince. doubt about it. So thank you for all your information and, and all you do for all of us. Well, thank you for having me. Come That's nutrition chat. sign on, dude. You look like super grateful. knowledgeable. Oh, and by <laughs> and I have to mention his many celebrity clients. I, I know some of which maybe I can mention well, no, just because they're on the internet. Well, and, some, and some people that are really <laughs> nice I want to talk about. Uh, Nisi Nash has done great the last three years. She's a wonderful person. Mm-hmm. I just was at the Dallas Cowboy Rams game in Hawaii and my client Tia wow. Carrera sang the Star Spangled Banner. Mm-hmm. She did an incredible job. Nice. Um, Colin, you know, Colin Farrell. Farrell's one of your yeah, clients. Yeah, so, I don't know who else so, I can um, The wonderful singer Sia. Sia, Sia, okay. Sia has been, Sia has been is, a, mm-hmm. is a wonderful person. And the list goes on and on and on. Yes. Which you can't and, mention. And on and on and on. Um, but, uh, so how do they find, how do we find you, Drew? Cause you're not really, you're not, you're word of mouth, but um, do you have well, any social so media? So if you know, no, I'm, I'm not even on I'm social off, media. I'm off the grid, but obviously <laughs> I always, wow. you, always, you always love me to say this. So my name, Drew, D-R-E-W, Prinz, P-R-I-N-Z. I'm located in Woodland Hills, California. 
Well, we're doing uh, office number is 818-887-2720. And you can, you can find me on the internet all the, t- all the places. Yeah, you're, you Google your name and you yeah. pop up a lot. You've done a lot of interviews and you've done national TV stuff. And can I have your autograph? Yeah. <laughs> you, already, you already have it. What are you talking about? Let me tell you. Such a beautiful uh, soul right, and man. friend. You are Thank amazing, you so amazing. much for coming, Drew. Thank yeah, you thanks, Drew. both for appreciate such it. warm words. I and appreciate it. Hey, I want to have you get on. I want, I want to talk about just multivitamin. That's it. I just want, oh. I want to talk about that. Yes, but I, I yeah, next time I want next to talk time. about the quality of vitamins. Quality of vitamins. That's definitely yeah. our next show. But but I also want to mention that Drew, um, Drew is going to, I'm going to sponsor and Drew is going to help sponsor um, one person. If you write in about your situation, uh, we're going to pick one uh, one viewer to have a free consultation with Drew and, and a protocol put together to try to help yes. you. Yeah, that's, that's awesome because yeah. we're all about we're all about healing. And it's not some cheesy uh, consultation. You go uh, you go above board when you when you put stuff out there. So you'll get you you'll sure get do. quite lengthy <laughs> yeah. information. So that's awesome. Well, hey, that's all we got for today, man. Drew, thanks Thank so much for coming you. on. Thank you know, you it's, so it's really much. an honor Thank always you. when you come out. We appreciate it. My name's Logan, the lover of Gabrielle, our amazing guest, Drew Prince. That's all we got for the healers tonight. Thanks for <laughs> Thank listening. Thank you for listening sure. and yeah. watching. Thanks for going on. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. Good night. Thank you.